There's one sure way to know a developer is lying, and that's if they say they understand Git. Git is a very powerful tool, but it can be very hard to interact with because it all's run from the CLI. Now, some tools have made this easier, giving you a GUI editor, but I really like the power and speed of a CLI. I just don't want to have to memorize all the commands. Well, that's where this tool I ran across called Lazy Git comes in. It gives you a nice GUI inside of your CLI. That way you can stay connected to a keyboard and still get a lot of the power that you expect from Git without having to memorize all the commands. Now, I've just started using this, but I'm already hooked and I wanted to do a quick video giving you my first impressions. So you ready? Let's jump in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. All right, so let's look at Lazy Git. You can see here this demo in the README and the actual installation process will depend on your system. I'm using Homebrew because I'm on Mac OS and this is the recommended install method. Now I've already run this, so I don't need to do it again, but you're welcome to do this and then you should be up and ready to go. All right, so now that we've got it installed, what can we actually do with it? Well, here I've got a brand new file and you can see that it's untracked, but if I jump back over here, I can go ahead and do lazy git like this and then open it up and it will give me that same interface. Now notice I've got several different sections. As a general rule, it breaks into halves. Over here, I've got five different options and then anything I select like two or three or four, these are by these numbers right here, will show me the actual output over this way. Now, whenever you interact with it, you're staying on the keyboard, which means you can just very quickly do things. Now notice I've actually got the file name and the exact lines that have been added as well. Now down below at the very bottom here, I've got commands that are quick commands. There are a lot more things you can do as well though, but you can see here, I might want to stage a commit. I just hit spacebar, and then I might want to commit it. I'd hit C and it pops up with this little commit summary. Here I can just do like add readme and hit enter and we're set. So I've already committed that file. Now there are additional things you can do. And whenever you're on any of these panes and it's showing anything over here, if you use the question mark, it gives you a list of commands available in that particular pane. Now, in order to actually filter these, don't just start typing because as soon as you hit one of these keys, it will actually execute that command. So what you're gonna do is hit the forward slash key, which will pull up this filter menu. Then I can simply come in here and say like commit or whatever, and it shows me what that happens to be. Now, once you hit escape, you can go back out and actually press that keyboard command. And once you learn the basics that you'll use, it's very, very quick and easy to get started with. Now, I've gone ahead and I've got this local branch right here, and you can see that I've got all these different commits from the past. Now I can also go into my recent commit and you can see here that here's what I've got, but I might want to go back one commit and say, hey, let's reset to here. So I can do a couple things. I can come over here and hit reset. Down below, you'll see I've got a command for that, but if I don't know what it is, again, question mark, that forward slash, and then I can just say reset. So that's one thing I could do. The other thing I could do is come over here to the last commit and drop this commit. Now down below, you'll see that's a lowercase d. I tap that, it says, do you wanna drop it? Yes, I do, it's gone, right? It's all gone. In fact, if I jump back over here, you'll see that it's no longer even present. So let's re-add something like this in here so I can show you a couple other things. Let's say readme.md, I can say like hi or whatever. So let's say I'm actually working in this branch and I realize, hey, I need to check out something else, but I'm not ready yet to commit this. Well, what I can do is stash these changes. Now, I really like stashing in lazy git because it gives you the opportunity to see anything you've got stashed down here below. So let's come back up to the file section by hitting two. Now down below, you'll see I've got stash as one of these options. That's just a lowercase s. However, I may want to go into the key bindings, hit that forward slash and start typing stash like this. You'll notice that I've got a capital S, which means to view stash options. So let's go ahead and do that just to see what options we have. Capital S shows me stash all. I is stash all changes and keep the index. Stash all including untracked files. That's something I would want to do, right? Stash stage changes or stash unchanged stages. So here I'm gonna do capital U and then I'll just hit enter. And now you'll notice that down on five here, I've got individual stashed items. I might want to check out a different branch first. So let's come back. That's what we were doing in the first place. I'm gonna jump over to my local branches with number three. And let's say I wanna come down this way and I will just wanna check out 142. I can do that with the spacebar key. Now I'm on branch 142. I've actually got a couple of things that I can push up. In fact, if I look up under one, you'll see the status shows an up arrow with two items that I can push up. What are those two items? Well, let's jump back to commits. That's number four, and I can see exactly what I have yet to push up. So how exactly do I push these items up? Well, again, question mark, forward slash. I'm going to search for push, and it's a capital P. So I'll exit out of that, and I could just hit capital P to push that up. Now let's go ahead and back here to space, and I'll go ahead and check back out 146. Now, remember, I've got stuff stashed in number five down here. And if I want to apply that, now I just hit the space bar and it applies it as long as I hit enter. So now if I jump back over this way, you'll notice that I've got this readme that it's untracked. That was the stash change that I kind of stuck to the side, switched to a different branch, did some stuff there, came back, and now reapply these changes here. 
So lazy git just makes it really easy to see exactly what you have. Now there's actually a lot more I can do. Let's say I came over here and did like high two down this way and I jump back over this way. You'll notice that now I've got both of those things showing. If I use the enter keyword, I can go in here and individually stage lines that I want. So I could stage this section just by hitting spacebar. Now it's stage just that individual line. Or I could hit A and then select the entire hunk and stage it. This really is just the beginning of what you can do with LazyGit, and I've been really impressed with it so far. Check it out and let me know what you think.